in this lesson, we're going to be talking more about our airflow induction. Just a reminder, these PowerPoints are adapted from a book by Leo A. Myers with Lama Books called Airflow Index. I highly recommend if you want to know more about this subject, if you have more interest, or doing this for a living, you do pick up that book. It is available from LamaBooks.com. Okay. So in this lesson, what we're going to be talking about is we're going to be talking about calculating duct size. Okay, what we want to cover as we go through this is we want to be able to change between square inches and square feet, because it does matter in our calculations. We want to be able to find the area of rectangular and round ducts. We want to find the sides of a rectangular duct when you know the area. And we want to find the radius and diameter of round ducts when you know the area. So again, we're going to deal with both areas of rectangular and round ducts. Now, this is actually very important because airflow is all based on the interior size or the area of ductwork. When we talk more about understanding how air moves, what can go wrong, we need to have a very clear understanding of the area within the duct, the space the air has to flow. So. When we take a look at a cross section of a ductwork, okay, you see a, this is a rectangular duct, could be sheet metal, could be fiberboard, who cares at this point, okay? The shaded blue area is the area that the air has to flow. The white lined area or the white line are the sides of the duct, okay? This is the perimeter of the duct. They are not the same thing. Okay, so when we take a look at area, we do everything in square inches, okay, when we, when we measure out area. So what do we mean by square inch? Okay, if we have two inches by four inches, okay, it means that we have two times four in area, length times height, Okay, so two times four is eight, and you can actually see this. If you count the inch blocks inside here, there's eight of them. Four across, two down. That's eight square inches. Okay, so area comes down to being width times height. And in this case, it's two by four. So our final answer on area here is eight square inches. Now, one square foot equals 144 square inches. And again, that's because one foot is 12 inches. So one is 12 and 12. So you take 12 times 12 and you come up with 144. Okay, so square inches is the number of square feet times 144. Okay, and now if you want to go backwards from square inches to square feet, okay, you do it the other way. Square feet is square inches divided by 144. These two formulas you have to know as we continue on through our ductwork conversation. It does make a difference. It is something you are going to use in the field when you're troubleshooting, designing, or anything you're having to do with airflow. Okay, sometimes also in terms of building, you have to be able to convert from square feet to square inches and back to square feet. So let's go back to our piece of ductwork. Okay. So the area is the width times height. Width is area divided by height. And height is area divided by width. Okay, it's three forms of the same equation depending on what you want to find. Okay, so again, area, width times height. Width equals area over height. Height equals area divided by width. That's for rectangular duct. Okay, now for round duct, we have to go to a little bit of a different formula. Okay. Round duct. Okay. We have um, 
diameter and radius, okay? Two different measurements. Diameter is 12 inches in an area in a 12 inch round duct. Okay, it's all the way across. Okay, so if you take a tape measure, put it across the end and measure it, you would have 12 inches. That's what our duct size is based on. However, half of that, so from the center to any one of the outside points is the radius. And at a 12 inch duct, the radius is gonna be six inches. Make sense? So the area of round duct is pi, that's that little squiggly character with the two legs, looks like a stool almost, pi times radius squared, okay? So if we want to break that down, the area of a 12-inch round duct is pi times 6 by 6, or 113.1. Now, if you take your calculator, Okay, might have a pi key on it, might not, but 3.14 is a good number to use for pi. So 3.14 times 6 times 6 is going to come out based on your rounding right around 113.1 inches squared. So again, we have round duct that's calculated area by pi times radius square. Rectangular duct is length times height. Okay. So pi, the little stool, the two lines, the crossbar is pi is 3.14. So if I require an area of 50 square inches for airflow, you have to be able to figure this out backwards. And this is where you really have to have a calculator to do this. And again, if you're taking this class, if you're looking at these PowerPoints as a part of one of my online courses, you will have um, a formula cheat sheet, I call it, where it gives you all of these formulas, but you just have to know how to use them. Okay, so if I require an area of 50 square inches, okay, our radius is the square root of the area divided by pi. So we put in our number, okay, so radius is the square root of 50 over pi. And when you calculate this all out, Okay, first you do the 50 divided by pi, so 50 divided by 3.14, and then you take the square root, hopefully using a calculator because it's a pain to do by hand, and you'll come up with 3.99. So if I'm requiring an area of 50 square inches, I need to have a radius of four inches, which means the reality is I need an eight inch round duct. Okay, so the diameter is gonna be eight inch. That's what you're gonna to wanna to order. Okay, so we have a whole bunch of different measurements on a single duct run, okay? If you're taking the area of point A, okay, we're dealing with, um, so we have 20 by 18, that's rectangular. So my area there would be the 20 times 18, okay? We have the same area. We're increasing to 12 inch high, okay? We need to have 72 square inches at B. That's one of my takeoffs. We need to have 1.75 square feet. Now you notice here, how they did the inches, they converted inches to feet here at C. And we need to have the same area as C. So this is why this all matters, okay? Every one of these, like this is a, where the 20 by 18 to point A becomes a higher duct, but we need to maintain the same area. So that's why this is really important. Why do we change duct sizes? Because of the access. We need to be able to go from one point to another and have different accesses, okay? You might not have the space in the floor. You might have to get into a smaller area. And for like the takeoffs where B is, I don't need the full 20 by 18 airflow through my six inch round. 
So we have to be able to change duct sizes, maintaining area, dropping area, because the area that the air has to flow is what really matters.